Did you know there's many Germans who do not like Halloween? No! Say it isn't so! No! <laughs> Welcome to our haunted mansion. We just finished dinner and it was so tasty. <laughs> so welcome back to another video, guys. Today we have a special Halloween episode for you. It's gonna be full of ghoulish stories and treats and scary things from Germany. And we're going to tell you, like our vampire said at the beginning of the video, Halloween is not nearly as popular in Germany as it is in the United States. We're gonna explain the history of how that came to be. But first, we must start with our ghoulish intro. We are the Vampire McFall family, a family of six with four kids. A cat, two hamsters, and how many ghosts? I don't know. A lot. <gasps> lot. There's a lot <laughs> of ghosts. And skeletons in our closet, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and we move from the US to Germany in February of 2021, and we share all of our adventures with you here on this channel. And today it is a scary adventure that we share with you. So Halloween isn't as popular in Germany as it is in the US, at least for those who are 35 and older. Children and young adults are becoming increasingly excited about Halloween in Germany, and it is changing. It's estimated about eight to 10% of Germans celebrate Halloween. Some say more, I guess it's kind of a hard number to quantify. Maybe they do it by costume purchases around Halloween, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, more and more Germans are celebrating Halloween. But before we get into that, we need to get into some of the history of Halloween and how this all began and how it started in Europe as All Saints Day became Halloween to begin with in the USA. So Halloween's origins, like many things, start in Europe. And a lot of the history of Europe starts back with the Celts because mm -hmm. the Celts controlled so much of Europe. And actually, we never talked about when we went to Hallstatt mm -hmm. that uh, some of the proto-Celts came out of that area. Mm -hmm. And so the Celts, they controlled a lot of Europe and had a lot of different celebrations. Mm -hmm. And one of them was at the end of the harvest at in, around October, November time. And that's when they'd celebrate the harvest. They would sort of prepare and get ready for the long cold winter. Mm -hmm. And actually their new year began on November 1st. So it's sort of like, so you close out all the harvest and you get ready for the cold winter. It's a bit scary. You have to be, it's going to be dark, but you get cold. sick and cold yeah, in, in the winter time. And so, you know, not only celebrating the harvest, harvest, um, but it was also sort of at the shift when the, on the 31st of October to the 1st of November was like a rift in the world and you might be able to go over to the spirit world in that time when, uh, when the new year began. And so they would light bonfires, there might be some scary things. They would tell ghost They'd stories. They would tell ghost stories. They would tell each other's mm -hmm. fortunes at that time too. Yeah. And so that's sort of where it came from, a pagan Celtic holiday. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people believe that the Christian church was trying to sort of create their own part of the holiday there because people were celebrating it because it was part of their past and trying to put something there uh, in that time period that was Christian. And so there had been some times to celebrate the saints. Actually, it began with Mary and some martyrs, and it was celebrated actually around Pentecost time. But eventually, around 700 somewhere, the Pope decided to make all all Saints Day uh, to celebrate All Saints on the 1st of November. And actually, that's the Western Catholic Church. The Eastern Catholic Church still has some of the old calendars back in the spring. But anyway, uh, in about 700, they made the All Saints Day to celebrate saints around that same time because there were already celebrations. 
And then a bit later, around 1000, they added in All Souls Day, where you think about all of your loved ones that have passed and are in purgatory awaiting their time to go into heaven. And so this ended up becoming the Tridium. Triduum, I'm not sure how to say that, um, but with ha All Hallowed Eve, which is mm -hmm. the night before that day of the change of the calendar. Oh, when you can go back and forth between the spirit realm and the physical realm. Right. That's All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve. October 31st. Yeah. Right. And that's when some of the church services will begin as on, on All Hallows Eve. And then All Saints Day on the 1st of November. And then All Souls Day on the 2nd of November. Okay. Now, here in Bavaria, we have All Saints Day is a public holiday. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's overall in all of Germany. We don't often celebrate All Souls Day so much around here. It seems many of the countries in the Americas are really big on All uh, Souls South Day. South America and Central America. South America, Central mm -hmm. America, Mexico is really big on yeah. All Souls Day. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess actually that whole week from the 30th of October through the 8th of November is sort of a whole week of, yes. of uh, but really that the three days are the most important ones. Mm -hmm. So Halloween is actually a uniquely American version of all of this. In colonial England, the very strict Protestant settlers who were coming from Europe began to limit Halloween traditions because they knew it was a pagan Celtic tradition and they wanted to eliminate it. So they didn't allow for Halloween harvest celebrations anymore, at least from the state of Maryland on up. From Maryland down through the south, of the 13 colonies, they were still celebrating these bonfires and having these festivals and telling ghost stories and telling each other's fortunes on October 31st. They would also dance and sing and they would dress up in costume. And that's something also that the Celts did. They would dress up in costume because it was believed that on October 31st, when the spirit realm opened up, that people who had died, the, their ghosts would come back to haunt mm -hmm. and torture the people still living who had done them wrong. So they, they came back to take their revenge. So people would dress in costume and put on masks so that the ghosts of the dead couldn't recognize them. <laughs> I just think that's so cool. And that's why we also have scary costumes. It was to scare away the evil spirits. So going back to the US, Halloween wasn't celebrated everywhere just yet in the colonial period. In the second half of the 19th century, America started to be flooded with immigrants, many of which came from Ireland. These new immigrants, especially the Irish ones fleeing the Irish potato famine, began to help popularize the American version of Halloween as we know it today because the Irish settlers were still celebrating the Celtic pagan ways of Halloween and they brought that with them to the U.S. So really we can thank the Irish <laughs> for the way Halloween is done in the U.S. today. And it began to change over time and even presidents began to popularize it. There was pictures taken with different White House presidents and their families uh, in the White House with costumes on and trick-or-treating began later on. So today in Germany, churches will have liturgical readings on the evening of October 31st. And then in some places, the parishioners will carry lanterns out into the graveyards after the service at nighttime, which, I mean, to an American sounds very spooky, <laughs> but it's not. It's to honor the loved ones of your family who have gone on before you. So these families place the lanterns or lit candles onto the graves of their loved ones who have already passed away. They also decorate their grave sites with branches, which you can buy. We, we saw them last year here in the stores. I mm -hmm. didn't know what they were. I thought they were early Christmas decorations because <laughs> <laughs> they were like pine branches. I thought, oh, how pretty. These are so beautiful. And I, I, I almost bought one and then posted it on Instagram and someone said, um, those are for All Saints Day, honey, not Christmas. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Oops. Yeah. So I didn't buy it. <laughs> you can buy candles at the supermarket this time of year and place those on the grave as well. And then many families will gather after that for a big lunch or a big dinner and have a big feast together with your, all of your extended family, you know, as a way to commemorate those who've gone on before you. So along with German Catholics, German Protestants also have some conflicts with the holiday. German Reformation is also on October 31st. It is the day to recognize and commemorate Martin Luther's nailing of his 95 theses to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany in 1517. 
German Protestants also have their own day to remember loved ones who have passed away, and that is Toten Sonntag which is on the last Sunday before Advent. The whole month of November in Germany is the month of remembrance. It includes the Catholics All Souls Day, or Aller Seelen, All Saints Day, Aller Heiligen, the Day of Mourning, or Volkstrauertag, and Toten Sonntag. Volkstrauertag, or People's Day of Mourning in English, is observed two Sundays before the first day of Advent. It commemorates members of the armed forces of all nations and civilians who died in armed conflicts, including victims of violent oppression. So the last day in the month of remembrance is the Protestant Sunday of the Dead. Toten Sonntag is intended to give consolation to the bereaved, keep their memory of the deceased alive, and at the same time call for a more conscious approach to life. For those who are Catholic, it's a very somber, holy, reverent celebration. Very unlike how it's done in the U.S., where it's basically this big, wild party. I mean, <laughs> it's a party for kids because they get to go get candy and do mm -hmm. trick-or-treating. And then teenagers and adults are having parties and drinking and going to clubs and, you know, dressing up. And it's this big, big party in the U.S. So it's quite a different feeling from what is going on here in the Catholic regions of the, you know, basically all over the EU. Uh, we're just speaking specifically of what's done in Germany. I'm not sure how it's done in each country. If you're watching from another country in the EU and your All Saints Day and All Hallows Eve traditions are similar or different than how they are in Germany, we'd love to hear what they are in the comments below. But we're speaking specifically of Germany because that's where we live. So Halloween began to be more popular in Germany with the influence of the American soldiers that came after World War II. They brought with them the Halloween traditions. And understandably so, Germans were like, hey, you're diluting our our <laughs> traditions with your tradition. You're taking over, not only are you occupying our country, now you're taking over our holiday. And so it began to be sort of a, we don't like that uh, kind of thing. And Halloween just sort of stayed near where all the military bases are, like Ramstein and Ludwigsburg, where there's a huge pumpkin festival. The largest one in the world is in Ludwigsburg, but that's also near a bunch of American military bases. So that's why it's so big there. There's one organization in particular in Germany that is said to have basically popularized Halloween altogether. And in the 1990s, during the Gulf War, Germany needed to cut back on some things. So they decided to cancel Carnival. <gasps> Yeah. No. Yeah, that's awful. I'm sure it was really mm. sad. And so costume manufacturers all over Germany were understandably scared to death. <laughs> scared to death. <laughs> they knew that they were going to struggle to keep their businesses open. So a special carnival group, which was called the Fachgruppe Carnival, for the German Association for the Toy Industry, which is called the Deutsche Verband der Spielwarenindustrie, they came together because they didn't want the badly hurt toy and costume industry to go under. So they said, let's pick another holiday where we can bring costumes back. Oh, Halloween. So it was literally a German organization that decided to popularize Halloween. And they put out a <laughs> huge marketing campaign in the 90s to bring Halloween back. So for many Germans, especially older Germans, especially those ages 35 and older, they didn't really grow up Dude. celebrating Halloween. Mm -hmm. Right, so understandably, they're like, hey, hey where this is this thinking? coming from? Yeah, right. There's no nostalgia there. Right. There's no happy childhood memories around Halloween. Like for Americans, yeah. oh my God, it's so centered in, in our childhood memories that we get dressed up every year and go trick or treating. It is a mm -hmm. highlight of a child's life. I mean, we love it. Yeah. And for me, I mean, my birthday is two days before Halloween, so Ooh. I always had uh, Halloween-themed birthday cakes, so it was yeah. always big for me. Yeah, so I can understand the reluctance of many Germans. You know, when you see that American culture, especially Hollywood culture, has gone all over the world and has influenced so much of the world's culture today, how you start to feel squashed and like, hey, what about our traditions? Right. You know, we're still German. We still want to keep the things that are important to us. And All Souls Day and All Saints Day are very sacred holidays yeah. where families are gathering and remembering Oma and Opa and all these special family members who have passed on. Yeah, it's I, not about skeletons and, and candy and all and that. And buying candy yeah, and right. buying costumes and buying decorations. Mm. So I can understand 
how many Germans would not like that? It's estimated that about 45% of Germans don't like Halloween and don't want it in the country. But again, I get it guys. I can totally understand why this wouldn't be a thing for you. Also, Germans don't need Halloween because you have the holiday of Carnival where everyone already gets dressed up. Exactly. And then just 10 days after Halloween on November 11th, there's St. Martin's Day, which has now become one of my favorite holidays in <laughs> Germany, where all the kids carry around little lanterns and go door to door asking for candy. So it's very similar to Halloween, except there's no scary stuff, there's no costumes. <laughs> yeah, right. So I guess you, it's somewhat similar to Halloween. <laughs> But for a totally different meaning. There, at least. That's the important part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the reason behind the two holidays are completely different, but <laughs> yeah. The other thing Germans don't like about Halloween is the trick aspect of trick or treat, mm. which I understand that as well. But I'll say, you know, in the U.S., none of us really practice the trick part. Kids say no. trick or treat, but the only thing they get are treats. No one scares little children anymore. Maybe well, they used to. <laughs> I mean, some of it would be the teenagers would get up to no good and... Toilet, yeah, toilet paper trees or the classic throw ones. Eggs leave, on yeah, throw eggs on people's houses. houses or leave poop at their door or yeah, stuff like that. Step so, in. Yeah. So, you know, the teenagers might get up to no good and doing stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, mostly it's, not it's so common. I mostly it's treats and not so much yeah. trick. Now there's tons of haunted houses. Yeah. I've been to some that are so scary as <laughs> I had nightmares for weeks <laughs> after them. I mean, really scary stuff. Sure. Kevin and I went to one when we were first married and had moved back to the US from France. That was so scary, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack in it. I mean, the people were getting really up in your face and it was scary <laughs> so yeah maybe that could be the trick part of halloween is the scary part mm -hmm. uh, but many people love it they love to go to theme park people dressed in costume and it's so scary and the haunted houses many people love it in the u.s well i mean even when we went to oktoberfest there were multiple rides there that were haunted scary houses. haunted house mm -hmm. themes so you know it's that must too. strike a chord here as well mm -hmm. So you should also know that there are some in the U.S. who don't like Halloween, just like the Germans don't. They also see it as a highly commercialized holiday that's sort of fake, you know. And a lot of the religious, especially more Christians in the U.S., don't like Halloween because it has the pagan traditions. And, you know, witches and ghosts and demons, they don't <laughs> want to celebrate Satan. They don't want to celebrate demons, you know, and understandably so from that perspective. So it's not popular among everyone. While it may look like that on TV and in movies and in the news, there's probably a large group. I'm not sure the percentage, but it could be a rather large group of Americans that don't like Halloween. Yeah, and it depends regionally. You know, I grew up in the North and pretty much everyone mm -hmm. celebrated Halloween and down in the South, the Where Bible, with the Bible Belt, it's, you know, perhaps less common. Yeah, like my parents didn't want to celebrate Halloween and we didn't. I didn't go trick-or-treating until I was a teenager. <laughs> And because my parents were quite religious and it didn't make sense to celebrate Satan when you worship Jesus. It didn't like, the two didn't go together, you know, which it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> so just know that too. It's not like everyone in America celebrates Halloween and there's this big party everywhere. Not true. So for Americans who may be in Germany, if you do want to celebrate Halloween here, you can, but you want to stick to more scary costumes. The cute and fun costumes you want to save for Carnival or Fasching or Fasnacht, okay? That's when you do the fun costumes. The scary costumes are for Halloween. <laughs> and if you run around in something cute, people may not understand what's going on or what you're doing or <laughs> may get some weird looks or comments. I don't know. <laughs> um, you're, and you may not find that a lot of kids are going trick-or-treating. It's still not very common to go trick-or-treating. Um, of course, in German, it is called, you know, Süßes oder Zauris. Oh, okay. Sweet or sour. Yeah, sweet or sour. There are some German kids celebrating it. It's not, of course, nearly as common as it is hmm. in the US, but there is a very huge pumpkin festival, like I mentioned in Ludwigsburg. There's also a big festival that goes on at the Frankenstein Castle, which hmm. is gonna be in our next video. We're gonna talk about the Frankenstein Castle. And there's like a whole month long event that goes on there. Again, that's also in sort of American military region of Germany. So that's why that's popular there. And there's like a horror show festival festival that goes on in Germany in the month of October. And then there's many farms that sell their pumpkins and sell their gourds and you can go yeah. pumpkin picking like mm -hmm. we do in the U.S. Yeah, I've seen a lot of roadside stands that have pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And more and more bars and clubs in Germany are celebrating and having big parties for the young adults on October 31st. So you can definitely find hit up a club or something mm -hmm. if you want a good party. 
And one last fun thing I want to leave with you is candy corn does have a direct German American connection. Candy corn is a very popular candy at Halloween in America. How popular is it here in Germany? I, I don't actually know. Are you guys big into candy corn? I haven't seen it here. I don't think since we've been here. I don't think I have either, but it was actually created by some German immigrants that moved to America. Following the American Civil War, two brothers, Gustav and Albert Gulitz, traveled from Germany to Illinois to join an uncle who had immigrated there earlier. After Gustav's death, his two oldest sons decided to revive the candy business he had originally started, and they eventually created candy corn as we know it today in the 1880s, and they made it very popular back then. Records indicate that Gulitz was making candy corn by 1898, and the firm's successor, Today's Herman Gulitz, Incorporated of Fairfield, California, is known as the maker of the Jelly Belly Jelly Bean Candy. Mm. So we hope you enjoyed our history of Halloween and All Saints Day and how all of these holidays came to be celebrated and what you could expect in both countries for this day. So we hope you enjoyed our spooky fun. We sure enjoyed making it for you. <laughs> Come back next week as we're going to be telling ghoulish German ghost stories mm -hmm. that will make your hair stand on end <laughs> and talk about haunted German castles. All right, guys, have a very spooky rest of your week and stay safe out there. There's a lot of ghosts. <laughs> All right, guys, see you on the other side of the underworld. Cheers. Cheers. Press the subscribe button or we'll haunt you in your dreams. <laughs>